<laughs> Good morning. I was all ready to start and I had not even turned the camera on. So here we are. The camera is on so we can start. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get together live here on Facebook, where we take a look at headlines from our city, state and country. We take a look at your questions, ideas and suggestions on how to best connect with each other and with our destination, our city, Puerto Vallarta as a community of English-speaking locals. So today is Saturday, April 22nd, and we have a little bit of news, nothing majorly new, because a lot of the headlines had to do with yesterday's demonstration around the legality or the appropriateness of the vehicle verification center that is operated here in Puerto Vallarta as part of a state program. A lot of people, as you know, are not happy with it. How did things go? Well, I'll tell you in a second. But first, we welcome everyone, as usual, to join us uh, as we take a look at some of these ones. Oh, my goodness, Eric is here. Eric invited me to go to El Tuito this weekend. And, of course, Eric, I am sorry I didn't even call. It's been a crazy week. But it's good to see you because today we are going to show the wonderful little snippets, video snippets that you sent me or that you shared on Facebook of the salt collection and the salt, uh, sea salt harvesting, I suppose, would be the, the proper term. I'm not entirely sure. We're going to take a look at that in a second. But first, as I was saying, we welcome everyone uh, to the broadcast, as always, particularly those of you that are watching live for the first time. If that is the case, feel free to write new in your comment and we'll give you a nice little welcome. If you have something important that you're Uh, wanting to share with everyone, please add a capital letter Q so that we can react to it during the comment section. Otherwise, I will just safely assume that you're having a lovely time conversing with each other as I am sharing the news this morning. And of course, we might as well just start with the, the protest from yesterday because the protest from yesterday was like a big deja vu. Um, and a replay of what happened a couple of weeks ago. They said they wouldn't block streets, but they did, and they did so for five hours, I read somewhere. They said that they wouldn't affect others, but obviously they did because people couldn't get to where they wanted to get to. They said there wouldn't be violent confrontation, but apparently there was. On the one hand, we know that by law in Mexico, we have the right to protest without um affecting others, but uh, once they started blocking the streets, which they said they wouldn't do that, you know, they brought in the special police force in these special RoboCop outfits, and, um, well, there was violent confrontation. And, of course, the state government once again sent a memo stating that responsible verification is here to stay. The verification center is not going to close It's going to remain open as it has been. So 
how many times is this going to happen? How many times will this <laughs> scenario be repeated until somebody like does something about it? We don't know. It is important that the population has the right to complain about things that they're not happy with. But for the nth time, the government has said this is not going to change. So what is going to make this go away? We don't know. We don't know. But I thought you would want to know. Again, it's not something that we're going to be following very closely until something <clears throat> important develops. Let me see. Now, moving right along. I read this one, and this one caught my attention. Um, Pasitos de Luz is a Bahia de Banderas-based nonprofit that provides resources and attention for children with special needs in low-income families. That is information that I got from their own website. Unfortunately, something seems to have changed within the organization, um, such that Noticias PB is reporting that they sent a memo to about 20 families whose special needs children are no longer eligible to their programs, <clears throat> despite the fact that they have been in the organization for six years. And the problem seems to be the way in which this change of policy was handled by the organization. Apparently, the founder simply sent out a memo to these families, and in the memo, she specified that they can only welcome healthy children, healthy children that weigh 18 kilos or less, which apparently contradicts just about everything found on their website and social media pages. So, you know, there are always two sides to every story, but this is one of the reasons why we always insist on treading carefully when it comes to relying on or supporting a local nonprofit without learning all that one would want to know about how these organizations are actually run. As we've said many times before, it is a good thing to be careful and read the fine print and ask other people for references. So hopefully whatever happened here will be resolved properly. Now let us take a quick look at the weather to see what's going on. Oh my goodness. Well, we know this to be true. Logan Roy never would have settled a defamation lawsuit for $787 million. No comment. Obviously, if you don't know who Logan Roy is, he is the patriarch of the wonderful series Succession on HBO. But what we're here for is the weather, 26 degrees, humidity is low at 46%, and the numbers in Fahrenheit is 29 degrees at present time. We are looking at a forecast that says mostly uh, humid with mostly cloudy skies through the day with a high of 30 and a low of 19. That would be for today. Tomorrow, Sunday will be humid with mostly cloudy skies through the day with a high of 30 and a low of 18. And we will begin the work week with a humid, mostly cloudy day with a high of 29 and a low of 19. How are we doing so far? Good. Let me set up a couple of things that I want to share with you, starting with the fact that today is Earth Day. Earth Day, of course, is an annual event on April 22nd to demonstrate support for environmental protection. First held on April 22nd of 1970, it now includes a wide range of events coordinated globally by EarthDay.org including 1 billion people in more than <clears throat> 193 countries. Their website has a, an option to look for events happening in your vicinity. I couldn't actually find a place to search on the website. But in lieu of that, I did see this article that was published on Vox that allows us to read a little bit about the seven most important environmental policies advanced around the planet since the last Earth Day. This is a reference article from Vox, and of course it is written in English. We will share this in the show notes so that you can take a look at that. And this one you may be interested in. We've mentioned the 17th um, Folkloric Dance Festival that is coming to Puerto Vallarta a couple of times in the past couple of weeks. We've mentioned that um, 
there are a number of dance troops that are coming from other parts of Mexico. And then there are also some dance troops that are coming from other countries as special guests. What I found out this morning is that there, what just happened? Um, hold on just a second. Did I just do that? Yes, my bad. What I just found out is that, um, hold on. I think I just messed up the news. Let me fix that. Give me one second. There you go. My bad. Uh, what I just found out is that the closure of the event is going to be a big free concert at Teatro Vallarta. And this will take place on May 7th. And the good news is that this will be a free performance at Teatro Vallarta, an opportunity to catch all these and enjoy all these folkloric dance troops without paying. It is free. The way you get tickets is you go to the, the, to the Puerto Vallarta Cultural Institute, the cultural center on the Rio Cuale, to get tickets. And all the, the details are located on this post. I also want to let you know that at the latest meet and greet just a few days ago, I had the opportunity to meet artist Gaia Kairos, or Gaia, I'm not sure how she pronounces her last name, so I mean her first name, so if I messed it up, I apologize. Um, she is an artist and she watches our broadcast regularly and at the event she told me that she's going to have an upcoming exhibition of her paintings that will take place in Marina Vallarta at Benito's Restaurant this coming Tuesday, April 25th, from 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. So if you are in the neighborhood or you want to explore her works, this is the place and time to do it. Now, also a few days ago, we mentioned uh, that our friend Eric has been spending a lot of quality time in his new home in Cuyutlan, in the state of Colima, where sea salt is harvested or collected. Again, I don't know exactly what would be the proper term, but it is an important source of sea salt here in Mexico. And I was quite curious to see uh, some short videos that he shared just a few days ago on how this is actually done. But let us start by giving us a reference point on where Cuyutlan is located. Here is Puerto Vallarta. Here is Guadalajara, of course. And Cuyutlan is down here, some five hours south, maybe a little less if you drink a lot of coffee and drive fast. Um, Cuyutlan, the name comes from Coyotl in Nahuatl, which means uh, coyote. So, And the, suff the suffix tlan indicates that this is a place where coyotes, coyotes can be found. Cuyutlan. In the same fashion, the word Tenochtitlan, which is a place that was founded by the Aztec, is based on Tenoch, which means fruit, and the uh, suffix Tlan means this is the place where you can find uh, fruit. Anyhow, uh, as we mentioned, Cuyutlan is one of the primary producers of sea salt in Mexico, and there's even a museum dedicated to sea salt production. And Eric posted these three short videos here we see um these huge tarps they look like black um plastic tarps where sea water is left to dry and once the sea water dries the crystals the, the salt crystals appear and they are collected here is a close-up a short close-up view of some of the crystals once the water has evaporated so they come around with shovels, I suppose, and they take all this salt away. And last but not least, here is a, a view of a um, truck packed with salt leaving the location. Uh, again, these are very short videos, but I thought it was a fascinating uh, set of images in a place that I'm hoping I will get to explore at some point if I'm able to pay a visit to our dear friend Eric, who has been having a lot of fun um, hanging out at this new place he discovered called Cuyutlan. It's a small town, but who knows? It, Puerto Vallarta was a small town at some point, so this place could become really interesting as we move along. Anyhow, let's see what everybody is um, 
up to this morning. I'm looking for good mornings and I'm looking for cues. I see a lot of good mornings, which I appreciate as always. Uh, let's see. Oh, how nice. Charles is leaving for Morelia next week and arriving March 3rd in Puerto Vallarta for a week. Excellent. Morelia is a beautiful city. I haven't been in a while, but I very much enjoyed it very much. Um, let's see what else we have. I see a queue. Friends of ours had their car checked at the vehicular center, at the verification center. They have an old Suru. No issues at all. Car passed. People were efficient and they thought the whole process was pretty easy. Said it was much more difficult for them in California. As I understand it, Dan, thank you very much for that report. The issue has less to do with whether they are efficient or not, as much as it seems to do with the fact that you have to pay 500 pesos for the privilege. Some people argue that 500 pesos is a lot of money. Other people with more political driven mindsets argue that this is a strategy of, of, of getting income by the governor and um, nobody has been able to prove that as far as I know. So it is what it is. Here's another cue from Logan. Hello, Logan. Anybody know what major overhaul they're doing to the plaza on the corner of Avenida Vallarta in Aquiles, Cerdán, possiblemente taking out the planters and putting in fountains? The Avenida Vallarta in Aquiles, Cerdán. Which one is Avenida Vallarta? Uh, because Aquiles, Cerdán is in Emiliano Zapata. And Aquiles Serdan, I don't know where this is, <clears throat> so I can't comment on this one. My bad. Uh, but if anybody else can, I would love to find out what this is about. Kathleen says we met Gaia or Gaia at the meet and greet. She invited us to her art show on Tuesday, but I don't know where it will be. Can anyone help us with the location, by the way? Uh, we'll stop by Licks for you. Today. Oh, by the way, Al, we'll stop by Licks for you today. Well, Kathleen, as I just mentioned, this is going to be at Benito's um, in Marina Vallarta. Again, there was no Facebook event. The, I just she just sent me a JPEG of the uh, of the information, which is why we insist that you know whenever you're having something, you know, just put it up on Facebook in their event section for free. If you are more lucky than I seem to be lately, your event will actually show up at the right time. I'm still sending out my feelers to technical support here and there to figure out what's going on. But again, this is going to be at Benito's this coming Tuesday. I think the notice said 5.30. Let me put it up on the screen one more time. 6.30, 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. at Benito's. Okay, as I was saying... <clears throat> Thank you for that, Christy. Harvested is correct when it comes to sea salt. Good morning, Salam. It's great to see you. Uh, let's see what else we have. Ah, Eric, Papi. Nice little blurb on salt. That truck averages 10,000 to 12,000 kilos of salt per load, and they collect the salt by pumping salt water from the ground into holding ponds. Um, wait, let me finish reading that. Holding ponds, uh, pump, pumping water from the ground into holding ponds, which filter the dirt and contaminants out. Then they move the clean salt water into the shallow trays. Yes, black plastic tarp where the water evaporates in two days. The salt crystals are swept with large brooms and then shoveled to move it to larger storage piles. Wow, that's amazing. Um, and I see a birthday. Happy birthday, Gwen. Indeed. Happy birthday. Um, let's do a happy birthday sound. What do we have? Woot, woot. Yes, let's do that. Woot, woot. Almost <laughs> done. Happy birthday. Uh, let's see. Oh, and apparently they have been trying to fix a leak in the Riviera Molino parking garage for years. 
Okay, I suppose this is related to Logan's question. I'm not entirely sure, but I think we are at the end of today's broadcast. Yes, unless I happen to see any other cues in these past cup uh, and in these next few seconds. So this was another week. As always, I thank you for your company, for your preference, for your support, and I thank you for nurturing our broadcasts with all kinds of fun and interesting questions. I will be enjoying the rest of the weekend. I hope you are too. And um, uh, and Kathleen adds, Gaia is Greek for Earth Mother, which is perfect for today. I think I agree with you. In fact, I know I do. So there you have it. This was Coffee and Headlines. I hope you have a great weekend. And I'll see you again here on Monday. Take care.